guys, how's it going? East Banglers out here, and today we're talking all about fishing in the winter for rainbow trout, specifically rainbow trout fishing at Lake Chabot, located in Castor Valley, California. Now, this particular lake in the winter fishes extremely, what's the word? It's very predictable, it's consistent, it's very much the same. Right now, the um, the lake is much lower than it really has been since, well, I think 73. So 1973, it's been a long time. 83, no, uh, last time there was that major drought. But it's been a long time since that lake has been that low. It's going to create more of a concentration, but it's more of the same. Um, more of the same, those fish... They like to uh, have a, they have a particular pattern that they tend to follow for the most part when they are planted. So I'm going to get straight into it. We're going to dive into all the tips and tricks, all the little extra things you need to know when you're fishing for rainbow trout in the winter. So we're going to focus because we're talking about planted trout. We're going to focus, we're going to focus on those techniques that are going to get you those planted trout. Now, Obviously, a lot of people are going to throw power bait, power eggs, mice tails, live night crawlers. They're going to throw all kinds of crappy jigs. They're going to throw flies. They're going to throw, you know, um, what, sorry, what do you call them? The old uh, a woolly booger on a float, a uh, slip sinker, you know, um, sliding sinker, sliding float, um, all these different things, little tiny floats with flies under them or a little tiny uh, tubes, jigs, all catch a lot of planted rainbow trout. You know, some of these uh, Berkeley atomic tubes are really good. Those are also 132, 116th uh, ounce uh, jigs. They're extremely productive. And a lot of times, you know, for me, I try to keep, you know, one longer finesse rod spinning for a lot of these applications. So when I'm going at winter conditions and I'm trying to target these rainbow trout and I'm, I'm going out and, you know, it's wet and it's rainy and you've got a lot of wind, you've got a, a lot of different changes in the pressure and <clears throat> incoming storms, outgoing storms, uh, you know, pre-front, pre pre-front, uh, you know, pre-storm post-storm, pre-front, post-front, all these different conditions. But here's what you need to focus on. At Lake Chabot, these fish tend to really, really cruise all the way through that water column. So they're going to be on the bottom, they're going to be in the mid-range, and they're going to be on top. They're really going to be all over. So they thrive in the cold water, and they do really well there. Um, so... I mean, they do well until about August, and that's when, well, pretty much most of those planter fish start dying off, actually. Very few of them make it past that because there's no oxygen, really. Well, there's a lack of oxygen in that lake and uh, a couple other, you know, reasons. Like, the water is going to get really warm, and, you know, it's extra low right now, so it's going to get even warmer if we don't get a hard winter. It's going to actually probably have a lot of die-offs and fish kills in California if that happens. So we're talking about fishing in the winter. Here's another thing. Since these fish are going to be all over, you're going to want to focus on throwing a lot of different baits. You're going to want to focus on, like, say, get a Castmaster or a little Clio maybe a blue fox spinner cat or a spoon you're going to cast that out there you're going to cover water you're going to cover different depths you know so you're going to cast out and do a straight retrieve maybe and then you're going to go ahead and count to three and then maybe you'll count to five if you're in a deeper area or something like that but what you're going to do is you're going to try different um areas of that water column because sometimes that's going to really uh make the difference sometimes these fish relate more up or more down and uh, sometimes they're suspended right in the middle uh, it allows you to really just kind of figure out you know if there's some active fish around and where they're at and usually if you get one there on a lure uh, 
that's where you want to post up with bait and put your uh, bait bait rod out there. But I'm telling you guys, when you're fishing at Lake Chabot and it's winter time, it's cold and it's wet. And that cold and those wet conditions, they really produce excellent fishing conditions. I mean, they're, they're miserable conditions for us to be in, but absolutely wonderful as far as the bite goes. I've had my best days by far trout fishing at that lake in the rain, in the wind, in those miserable wet winter conditions. Right now is going to be phenomenal. Give it a week or two. That This lake is going to turn on hard. Big fish, quality, quantity, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come. So <clears throat> one thing uh, you guys got to keep in mind is adjust your leader length. So, you know, if, if you're not getting bit within the first, you know, if you want to start out with one leader length size and 30 minutes, change it. You know, I like to do one rod right around that 14, 16, 18 inch length. And then I like to do another rod that's more in that, you know, two foot range. Now, sometimes um, that's not gonna get bit. 30, 45 minutes goes by. I'm switching those leader lengths to 24 inches to 28 inches. And one of them is gonna be 36 to 40 inches. And so that's what I do. And eventually you're gonna find that sweet spot. And I know it doesn't seem like it would matter, you know, oh, this fish is just a couple feet above or below. And I know it doesn't seem like it would matter, but I've actually been in some situations where I could see in the body of water, there were fish piled up, stacked up. They would not hit my power bait when it was six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 inches for a liter. I was young and I learned a lesson that day. It was very clear to me. Uh, my family was there. We all tossed everything we could at them. And what did I do to totally change the entire day? I adjusted the leader and I went to roughly a 26 inch leader. It, it just had to be right in that 26 inch range. And for whatever reason, those fish that wouldn't hit it, at 16 inches, they would hit it at 26. So those that 10 inches made all the difference. We ended up all limiting out and uh, it was a wonderful day. That was actually at Donner Lake in California. If you guys haven't been there, great rainbow trout fishing. You know, the Mackinac fishing is pretty good there too. All right, so another thing, you know, guys, when you're fishing the wintertime trout at Lake Chabot, always remember, always remember that um, in general, you know, you're going to have constant movement this time of year. Usually your bait's never really sitting still. Um, it's, it's always kind of moving. So as long as you are fishing highly productive areas, high percentage fishing spots, like I like to call them, you know, that's really going to give you an edge because sometimes I see a lot of people walk up and they're throwing their, you know, they throw out their bait, they kick back. The thing is, it's a strategic, you know, it's very strategic as far as uh and and it's going to determine your success rate just by you know picking the right area to throw the bait you know so whether you go off of past experiences or whether you're going off of where you saw somebody last week or yesterday catch some fish or a big fish these things do help but I, I really want to remind you when you're at Lake Chabot, it, you cannot beat Raccoon Point on the left-hand side. Straight out all the way to the dock is pretty, pretty good. But I, you know, that area is pretty much dried up almost in that area right there up on that. But the left side is still good. And, you know, there's actually a Strawberry Point uh, before that is also really good. Cast into the left. That's some good water and um, if you uh, 
go even further, uh, you know, I want to say maybe a half mile past Indian Cove. You guys also have some decent water, but I guess really with the, with, uh, with, uh, you know, the winter conditions, these fish are going to be spread out. You know, you're going to have a lot of fish and they're going to be all over. But as the water warms up, you know, as you get into that late spring and that early summer, these fish get down deep. These fish become less active sometimes. And in general, well, they're less active because of those warm water changes. And um, it just seems, you know, like they're more concentrated as that water temperature um gets up and, and and there are some schools you know that tend to continue to just go back and forth across certain areas so i would recommend fishing off of a point and if you can't fish off of a point you know fish somewhere like uh coots coots landing um you know fish to the right of the dock i would say a hundred yards right there's like a launch area that launch area fish there and to the left that uh right now you know i would say is top three you know spots probably if if you don't mind the walk that is you know where i would be right now if uh if i was out there fishing tomorrow that's where i would go so you know, wintertime fishing for rainbow trout's a little bit different. You know, it's it's cold, it's wet, it's windy, it's not that fun as far as those conditions go. But the fish are extremely active and um, a lot of people, they go out there and sometimes they got the wrong spot, they got the wrong bait. They sit there for a few hours and they say, I'm done, I'm not gonna do no more of this. And the next thing you know, um, you know, they miss out on the opportunity to actually figure out why they're not catching. And that just requires a lot more time on the water or changing your baits or changing your spot. I mean, you can change your bait all you want, but if you're not in the right spot, you know, there's this old thing. It's like a debate. Like, what would you rather know? Would you rather know the bait that's going to work or would you rather know the spot? you know, that's got the best, the best spot on the lake for what you're going for, you know, quality, quantity, big old stack of fish. What's better to know? Everybody says, you know, everybody says, oh, just uh, show me the spot. I'll figure it out. I mean, I'll get them here and there on this and that, and I'll eventually figure it out and get it down hat but uh yeah it all it all starts out guys with knowing where you need to spend your time there's areas that these fish concentrate there's high percentage fishing spots and if you're not in those spots you're basically um you know you're not playing the odds and if you're not playing the odds and the percentages then it becomes extremely difficult when everything is already difficult enough you know it's expensive going fishing so uh catching a couple fish not only you know some people try to say i know it's real popular they're oh it's a bonus it's a bonus let me tell you something catching is a part of fishing it's uh you know it's what makes the trip it's what uh you know instead of going home and you know driving home and feeling bummed out you know generally uh it's a lot more fun to uh razz your friends that you, you know you out fished all right guys so we want to talk about one of the last things that we you know is extremely important when you're fishing in the cold water the winter time for rainbow trout at lake chabot and that's going to be for sure without a doubt you're going to want to always cast one rod shallow you're going to want to like just cast it out 10 feet, 15 feet. You're going to want to cast out that other rod extremely far. You're going to find out really quick that generally most 95% of the fish are going to be caught somewhere between 10 to 20 feet out. Very short casts. And I just think that a lot of people... 
they cast out a bit too far. There's a time and a place that's later in the spring. That's when you're going to cast out further, you know. But in general, right now is not the time. So uh, I just uh, think a lot of people cast out too far and almost pass by a lot of these cruising fish. So remember, guys, right now the lake is low. And uh, any areas that have a lot of growth or um, any kind of weeds or things of that nature, it's going to have concentration of fish due to the fact that there's, you know, that's where a lot of the oxygen's coming from. And uh, there's also you know, some other features, like if you've got a creek feeding in to, you know, the lake, that's going to increase your chances if you fish on the outside edge, but that's only after we have a good runoff. A lot of people think, you know, you're going fishing in the winter, there's muddy water, and uh, what are you going to do? I mean, I mean, these fish can't see it. I guarantee you, that uh, this bait is naturally moving around in the current and these fish come along and uh, if they're going to find it, they're going to find it. Most of the time, it all has to do with location, location, location. Like we talked about, knowing the spot is more important than knowing the bait to use. Okay, so ultimately, having... The knowledge to you know basically figure out where the best areas in the lake are to fish are gonna allow you to figure out that lake a lot faster presenting your baits to say dozens or hundreds of fish instead of say one to three is really going to improve your odds it's going to tell you what they want what they don't want i mean a lot of times that's really what it's all about, the little things. Remember, guys, this is winter time. The water clarity is not good. It does not matter if you have 6-pound, 8-pound, or 10-pound monofilament. It really doesn't. These fish cannot see the line. I would recommend you guys stick with 8 and 10. So, in general... I hope this video helped you guys get a couple more fish in the winter time and uh, try to remember that uh, the winter is really good some days and other days it's not so good. I think that has a lot to do with that pressure that comes in and out because there's so many storms. <sighs> but I promise you, sticking it out is generally going to, you know, pay off. So stay tuned.